Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So it's been a long time since I coded in Node.js and I just uh, I, I just said that I'll maybe try to do a project so that I can remind myself of the Node.js uh, programming skills that I used to do sometimes back. So in this tutorial I want to I want us to develop a blog in Node.js using the Node.js Express and of course you are going to use MongoDB for the database. So I just created this as maybe a demo application that you're going to, to build in this in this tutorial. So you can see it's, uh, it's, uh, it is a full CRUD application where we have the, we have the posts, uh, the home page has a list of posts here that when you click on a post, it opens uh, that uh, single post. And also you can create a post but then you, you see that when we click on create post, we are redirected to the home page. And the reason is that we are not authenticated. So we also have the authentication set uh, so that only the authenticated users are able to create posts. And uh, for that, you have the, the register where a user can register and the login where a user can log in. So let's look at the register first. So let's just go to the register. And then I'm just going to register a new email. I'm going to call, I'm calling it test email a uh, test mail at gmail.com now uh, this is the username you should just do test user that is the username and then the email and then the password I can just do something simple like one two three four and click on the register button and as you can see right away <clears throat> we have been redirected to the to the home page and now since we've registered you can try to log in uh, so we can click on the login button here and enter the email and enter the email and the password which is one two three four and log in now once you are logged in you can see the changes that have taken place here you can see that the username appears here and the logout button appears here and the, the user session has been started so when we click on the logout the session is going to be destroyed now since we've, we've now logged in we have been authenticated we are able to to create our own post so for example i can click on posts here and then i can enter maybe uh, test post by test user so let me just do that and then the it is going to be test user but then you can change this functionality so that instead of entering the username manually you can just take it from the the user session and then you can just do this the description and then this is the test user content ah, that is a problem okay and the functionality of uploading email is also included where you can choose an email image uh, you can choose an image let's take that image and hit on sub on submit and that post has been created so you can see this is the post, test post by the test user, the description of the post, posted by, and the time that it was posted, right? So if we click on this post, it is going to open that post and you can see this is the image that we uploaded. Uh, so you can see that there are a lot of things you are going to learn. You are going to learn how to set up an ODS project from scratch. You are going to look at the user authentication. We are going to look at the user session management and uh, we are going to see how you can upload emails as well. Uh, so that being said, let's just uh, get started and uh, create a new project using Node.js. So I'm just going to log out and close this project. And then, so for that, we are going to use a lot of, uh, not a lot, but many uh, packages that you're going to install as we continue in the process of developing the application. 
but then for that theme uh, there is uh, you need to download a, a theme called clean blog it is an open source theme by start bootstrap okay it's an open source theme by start bootstrap so you just need to come to this website and and download this theme here once you've downloaded you are going to have these files uh, you're going to have this uh, these files and so these files are the ones that you are going to use uh, to as the user interface of our, our blog uh, project so let's get started so you are going to let's close everything navigate to the folder of your choice and then you're going to open the, the terminal there and then the first thing you need to create the directory in which our project is going to live and let me just uh, call it uh, so we are going to use make deal uh, we are basically making a directory and we will call it node blog let's just call that directory node blog then after that you're going to cd into node blog a node blog and from there we are going to initialize a new application so i do just do npm init uh, dash y so basically dash y uh, flag y it means basically it's going to accept the defaults it is going to create package.json uh, uh, a file from where we can it will, it will help us manage the packages that we install in our application so what we need to do is to just open uh, using the using your code editor i use vs studio code uh visual code studio code visual studio code and this is the project so you can see that we just have the we just have one file for now which is uh, package.json with the default configurations but this configuration you can change them so the name here is going to be i like calling it app.js and from now now we, we are just want us to talk about the folders that we are going to have in this project because that's very important at the start so we are going to create a new folder which is called public the public folder is going to contain our public assets like the the, the CSS and JavaScript files and as long as as well as images and other files and then we are going to create a new folder called views so this is going to have our main template as, as well as our views and we are also going to create another folder called um, uh, models so this models folder is going to have our models and we are also going to create a folder called controllers which is going to have our uh, our controllers and finally we need a folder called middlewares so and that's going to have our middlewares that are going to basically middlewares middle middlewares are functions that our requests go through for it either to be changed or maybe to be checked for certain criteria to be met for it to be allowed to proceed to the next level so those are the middlewares all right so having done that now you're going to create the main file from where we are going to to initial or to start the server so we just create this app right in the root directory called app.js well that is done now we need to install express because we said that this is a node.js express uh, we are using express framework so let's try to go, go into that uh, folder and open a new terminal there and just install express by doing npm i express And so that's great so you can see it has installed package lock and that oh, it has created a new file a new file called package lock uh, but then it has also installed express now if we go back to the 
if we go back to application we are able now to uh, to to import express so just do const express is equals to require express and then after that we can now initialize express and instantiate express by just doing const app is equals to express um and then after that let's just start the server we can just do uh, before we create our first route let's just create server so we just do um app dot <coughs> app dot listen so app dot listen we want the app to listen to a certain port and actually let's listen to port you can you can choose the port okay you can choose the, the port that you want so let's just say port 5000 or 6000 whatever port that is open and then we are basically saying that uh, console login that the server started on port 5000 all right um then after that uh we need now to install another we need to install another package that is called nodmon and nodmon is going to help us um it's going to help us watch over the app.js watch over the server so that in case there are changes it is going to update in real time so just do a npm install dash d dash g nodmon so we are doing dash d because it is a dev dependency we are installing it but we're not going to use it in our application but it's going to help us in maybe just searching over the the server file and updating the changes every time they happen and that is it so to maybe demonstrate what i'm saying we'll just do nodmon app so we are just telling the node to start to to run this app.js and you can see it says server started on port 5000 right but there's nothing so let's create our first route and see uh, first route it is just going to be the home page mm. so what you are going to do i'm just basically going to do return response dot status mm, to, uh, and also what you need to do let's just do json let's just render json uh, json data in message hello world all right so basically what is going to happen here is when somebody is the home page of this port 5000 local loss for 5000 it is going to render this json data so let's save that and go to the browser and try to open uh, that uh, or try to open local loss for 5000 and there you go you can see it has rendered that uh, the json data well now once we are done with this uh, now our server is running we need to think of how we can now uh, integrate our our theme because i told you that we are going to use that theme called clean blog now and also you need to think of the templating engine that we are going to use now the templating engine is basically the kind of a language that will help us now write the node.js or javascript commands in html and to be able to understand those com those commands and process the data so for us to do that we are going to use an an engine called edge so edge uh edge is an engine that is it's a template engine that is not that popular but it is very simple to use and that's why i love it so if you just search um, edge templating engine express uh, so okay so it is called express edge right you can see uh, it has a 45 <laughs> it has 45 uh, stars um and then you have the instructions on how to install it and how to use it so to install it we just run this command npm install dash uh, and install express edge 
and then you can save but then it will automatically save in the new version so thank you uh, so as that installs let, let's look at the usage so once it has been installed you basically want to to import it and then you can you basically import it and then after importing it this is how you use it right so let's right away just copy this or maybe we'll just uh, once it, it has been installed i think so we'll just import it here okay so we just do uh, const express Uh, config config engine is equals to require express edge and then once you are done with that you just do app dot use app dot use engine and then app dot set uh, views so we are basically telling it to operate from the views directory you can see this views directory here right uh, but then uh, there's one thing we need to do that we didn't do we need to set the static folder as the app dot static um, as the public folder so for we need to tell the the server to use the the public folder as the static assets folder so we just do app dot use i am sorry for that app dot use express dot static and then you set it as the public folder so basically it is going to the public folder as the, the folder for, for for static assets and that is all so that is not that is all for on this file but then you need to do further configurations on the in, inside the, the the view so since you've installed the edge you need to configure that so you need to go to the views and create a new folder called layouts layouts is where we are going to have our layout so let's say that you want to have admin dashboard to have it is a different layout from the from the from the front end uh, dash from the front end theme you'll basically create your layouts here so we want to create the first layout file and I want to call it just app, app.edge. So we are using edge templating engine, so you just call the, the, the extension is .edge. And then here, basically we need to import all the, the HTML files. Let's just go to the, let's go to the, let's go to the theme and open index. Select everything and copy, and then we'll close that. Go to the edge and paste everything there. So basically what we are doing here, we are using that template. We are using all those files. Um, but then we need to remove from, there is one place that we need to extend. So let me explain more what I'm talking about. Um, so let me explain more of what I'm talking about. You can see that this is our template. This is basically a HTML, but it's not automated. Now you can see that there are sections of this HTML theme that are repeating. For example, we have this image. If I go to about page, you still see that image. If I go to contact page, I still see that image. That is not what we want. We don't want to create independent files that have this repeating content. And also the footer is repeating, right? So what you want to do is to have a template from where we just want to extend, from where we just want to extend from the section where content is not repeating. So for example, the place where the content is repeating is this body here. So if I click here to about, you can see it has different content. If I go to sample post, you can see it has different content. So this is the only place that you we want to extend our template. So for that, we will go to to our theme and then look this header is that image that is repeating we don't need it here and this is the content is the content section all right 
So what you need to do is to remove it up to the, the header right here. Just copy by doing Control X. And now from here we can extend our, we can extend the other pages. So how do we do that? So the syntax is this. This is the syntax. So from here we we'll just do section the content. So basically this is going to know that everywhere we import this layout file and call this content section, it is going to place the content the, the content at this particular place. So after saving that, we'll go to we'll go back to the to the views here and create the first home in the, the first page which is which is the home page. You will just call it index dot edge, and in the index dot edge, we want now to extend that layout that you've created, which is up dot edge. So how do we do that? So we do at layouts, at layouts, and then we specify the the directory where the layout is the layout is in, so that the layout is inside the layouts folder dot up okay so this is important and which section do you want to, to extend the contents we want to extend from the the section called uh, content you get it right content and then you do end section so basically this uh, the templating engine works uh, it's almost the same way as laravel except for a few changes so let me just paste the content there and that is it now uh, we want uh, the application to work in a way that when somebody visits the home page we would now render that page that we've created which is the index page so how do we do that we come back here and instead of now uh, just uh, sending the json data we just do res dot render and basically we render the index page right so let's save that and go back and refresh you'll go back to the to application and refresh and see what happens and you see that it has rendered our <laughs> it has rendered our our template but then there is a problem it is a problem because you can see that our template is broken how do we solve this right so to solve that is the reason why it is broken is that we have imported the 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 template but we've not imported the assets so we need to come and select all of them and just and just copy the content then go back to the we go back to the application which is not blog open the folder that i said you're going to store the public assets and paste those files once we've done that, we go back to our application and now uh, to the index.edge and what we do, we go and look for, not index actually, we go to the layouts. And now here we just add that. And we add that forward slash and save. Now, after saving that, if we come back and refresh, everything should work fine. And now you see now uh, the CSS and JavaScript is being rendered. And that is great. That's uh, beautiful. Now we've rendered our home page. Now we've imported our template and created the home page and rendered it. What next? So these other pages you are going to create them as you go. So from here onwards, it's going to be quite easy. From here onwards, it's going to be we basically are going to create file here and import just copy this template and change the content well the next thing is we need to think about the folder the, the structure of our application how, and how our application is going to function you can see that here we are writing a lot of functionality on the on this on the application the app.js which should not be the case so instead of doing this here we need to create a controller that is called post controller that is going to we are going to write the logic and then we will import that controller here and then basically use that controller 
uh, in any of the routes that you like uh, to have to, to you like to have in our application so let's go to the controllers and create a new controller called a post controller i don't know let's call it post controller let's just do post controller but you can name it anything you like to name it dot js and here we basically need to i need to to write maybe let's do but then we are going to change this and let's write the first we are going to have many functions in this controller right so let's just write the first function so const um it's going to be asynchronous um let's just call it a uh, home so let's just do const index <laughs> i don't know how we should we need to call it const home page I just call it show home page is equals to and we want to make this uh, let's just not make it async and basically we just rendering the the index right so we are basically rendering the image and then after that we need to export that so i'll do modules module dot exports uh, is equals to so we need uh, to have the to, to export this function so that we can use it on our app.js file so once we've done that we'll go back we'll come back to the app.js and then import it so we just do const const show home page is equals to require controller dot post controller right then once we've done that uh, we now remove this and replace it with the show home page right and that is all uh, now if we go back uh, that is all with that step if we go back and refresh we find that it works uh, it, it still works okay it works because uh, it works but then the only thing we've done that we've, we've reduced that we have removed some code from here and separated and taken into another file now we need to think of the database because that is the, the, the most important part of our application is how to store the database and uh, to, to store the data and be able to retrieve that data from the database now in this in this uh, in this tutorial we are going to use mongodb now at this point i need to say that you need to have mongodb installed because if i had to take you through installing node.js and in your machine and also installing mongodb it will take a lot of time for us to do this tutorial uh, so assuming that um mongo you have mongodb installed and i will i, I will also suggest that you install the mongo compass and that is it basically gives you the interface that you can maybe view the the collection that you create in your database right so having said that let's install mongoose so npm install mongoose mongoose is is going is the package that is going to help us uh, interact with the mongodb database and for each of these packages that you are installing if you would like to know how they are used you can basically search them and you'll get them we'll go to the to the github repository and see how to install them and how to use them right so now that mongodb has uh, installed we want to write a function here probably it will be good if we just create uh, we just create a new file I don't know. I think it is to be good if we uh, if we just create a new file. So let's just create a new file and call it db.js. And after doing that, here we are going to do 
module dot exports is equals to now here we are going to create uh, we are going to create uh, a function that executes uh, that it, it that calls itself so we are just going to do db is equals to so let's just do this const db is equals to so we just initialize that, that function is going to be async it's going to be async function and that is an arrow function but you can also use the other old way of doing functions yeah so this means that th th this function is going to call itself so that is so we write the logic inside here so const so what we'll do is just to do await we need to import actually we need to import mongoose here so we need to import mongoose here just do const mongoose is equals to require mongoose there then just do await mongoose.connect and now this is your local host connection uh, url this is the your local host connection url and then there are, there are various parameters that you need argument that you need to pass there uh, i think those are enough you just need to pass there the user new url parser and then use unified topology uh, that is all we need to do and then once this happens we just want to do console.log db database connected or connected to the database let's just leave as default but then in case there are any errors you need to to catch those errors so we'll just cut this code and do use the try catch i uh, use try catch so try try in case you have any error just want to console uh, dot log that error and then here you need to to paste that so in case you will have any error we are basically going to get that error uh, in our console and save it after saving it, we just want to export it. So modules that export is equal to db. And once we've done that, um, once we've done that, we are going to import it here. So we'll just do const db is equal to require that db. That's that's all. So once that is done, so if we save that, I don't know if it is it has connected. But in case you encounter any problems, we are going to we are going to basically get that file uh, directly here. So we can just do this. Uh, it is not connected to the database. And most, uh, and most likely the reason is this. The reason is this URL. We need to change it first. We need to remove that. This is the name of the database. And this is the localhost connection. Uh, this is the local, the local, the MongoDB localhost connection URL. Now I checked and found out that this URL changed. So I need to do here. I think it is zero. 0 .0 .0 .0, if I'm not wrong. So that is the new URL that you we'll, need to use for the connection to go through. So let's see. And there, here you see database connected, right? Immediately after changing this, we, we had a, a connection error um, saying that con connect and whatever, it refused to connect. But then after ch changing this, you see that it connected to the database. Well, that is all. Now we are connected to the database. The next thing we need to think about is now the schema. 
So since you are going to stop post, you need to think of the post schema, right? So let's go back to the to here and now we need to create the model here. So we need to create a new file inside the models, you need to call it post.js. Inside post.js, you need to import mongoose. So const mongoose uh, is equal to require mongoose. And then uh, we just uh, do const schema const schema is equals to mongoose dot schema and then you can just do uh, const post schema is equals to new schema so we need to think of the, the title we're going we are going to have the title i showed you that you have the title the username the description right so just do the title and should be a string and required true we have description that will be a string and we have a content that will be a string as well and then we have created that that was the time it was created and the default is going to be dot dot now and that is all but then you need to add an image okay so we'll just copy this and press here and change it to image and type is going to be string required I don't need, it didn't require it all right yeah and we also need the username right we also need username And that is all so now this is our schema but then we need to we need to do this we need to do a const post is equals to mongoose.model post and then you pass that the post schema and then we export that uh, post that we, uh, we we export that post model yeah and since you've done that, we are now able to use it. Now we need to create a new, a, a new. Uh, we need to create a new path here, which is going to to the slash posts slash new, and this is going to we are this is going to show, is going to show the to display the create post form, right? It's going to display the create post form. And we need to, to go to the views and create that uh, file. So just do create post dot edge. Create post dot edge. And then here we just need to import the same code here. Except that we are going to, to do some changes. And we are going to do some changes in a way that we want to remove the content, the default content, and add our own content. Okay, so we need to remove it from here. So right here we are going to, we can just do H1 and do create, create a post form and save it so once you've saved it and we go to the controllers to the post controller and create another uh, function so const create post is equals to the const create post equals to request there and basically what you need to do is to render so we just do re re rest dot render and what we are we rendering we are rendering create post uh, create post file so create post dot edge the file that we just created and then after that we, we export that as well we export that as well or then you can get it from here create post and then we replace this with uh, create 
get post and save that now that we've done that if we go back uh, if we go back to the application and refresh it and go back to and try to access that page post slash new let's try to access that page and there we go here we have that page has been rendered well now we can create your own form uh, just create your own form but to save on time i'm going to copy that form the form's content if you like to get this project i'll i'll push it to github uh, but then let me just copy that form from the the previous project so that i can save on time So I've copied the form and what I'll, I'll do is to paste that form here and save it. And once I save it, if we go back and refresh this page, we should have our form rendered. You can see our form is rendered here. We have the title, the username, the description, the content, and the image. All right. And now then I want you to look at something here. Go to the form and look at the action. This is important. You can see the action is this route that you need to create slash posts and slash store. And then the method is post. And this is very important. The method should be post. And then the end type. This is also very important because you are going to upload images. So if you are you try to upload images without this, the, it is not going to, to send the image data to the to the, the, the to the back end. So you need to put those into consideration and make sure the name is title username description and content and also the image you need to make sure that then you also include the name in your form so that is the most important but then you can basically get these fields so let's save that and since our form is now rendered we need now to, to we need to create another method on the post controller to handle the the storing of the of the data right the storing of the data to the database so there are two things you need to import here uh, there's one thing you need to import here which is the post uh, mod model so const post is equals to require models slash post okay so once you've imported that we need to create here a const store post so we have that is an async it is an async method uh, it is an async uh, function uh, because we use promises when we are doing the operations in the database so we need to make it uh, async uh, an async uh, uh, function i mean i'm sorry so what we need to do here so let's close that so what we need to do here is it's very simple we just need to do a try catch statement a try catch in case you have any error when trying to write the data to the database we just want to console log that error console.log error but then if everything is working you need to now do the functionality of creating uh, that here so we we'll just we will we'll do this post dot create and what are we creating is the request that body right so the request going to come up is going to come with uh, various data so let's just try to console log the data console console dot log request that body let, let me comment this out first because there is something very important i would like to show you Hmm, why is it not commenting out? So let me save it. So let's just console log request that body and see uh, that is one thing I want to show you. So here we are going to 
to import that i don't know if we exported it let's go back to the controller i need to export it as store post and let's go back to the app.js and right here we need to import it so a store post and then once we've done, we've done that we need to create app.js post now we are using post because that is a post uh, the request that is sent is through post the, the verb that is used on that route is post so we need to do this post slash store that is the that is the 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 route that we included in the action if you go to the form you can see it is same as here so it they should be same so once this is done and uh, let's try it let's go to the let's go to the form and try to submit some data just random data okay the form is required you just to move that uh, the image is not required so we need to come here and delete required and again we'll refresh and try Oh, there's something that we didn't do so if we go to the if we go to the if we go to the application it is still running but we need to do this we need to go back to the post controller and after console logging this we need to redirect so just do res dot redirect You need just redirect to the home page, right? And again, let's try to submit it and see. And right there, it, it redirects to the home page. But then if we go to the console, you can see that it, it is rendering undefined. Despite the fact that you are sending the data from our form, you are filling the form and trying to submit the data, it is returning undefined. And the reason is this. Uh, usually we need a middleware that is going to intercept that data and form data that is going to process the form data okay we need we need, we need that in our app.js so right here in the app.js thank god initially we were using body parser but now express actually wrote that functionality in the express library now we can use it so we can basically do uh, app.use express.url encoded extended to and then you can just do app.use express.json so those are the middleware that are going to to handle the form data so what you are going to, to try and do again is to submit the form So let's, uh, once we submit, we are going to check if this data is being submitted. So let's just click on submit. It directs to the home page, but now we need to check the console and see if it submitted the data, but it did not submit. It is now submitting an empty, it is now submitting the an empty, initially it was undefined, but now it is submitting this okay and so guys as it is in programming we encounter this error where like when we try to submit this form we find that there's no uh, no data is being consoled right no no data is going is being stored in our console as we wrote in the here okay and i've tried to figure out the reason and sometimes in programming you may find that the reason is very weird and it's many it will be very very may be hard to 
and to get it so we did import in the app.js we imported this which is important it's important for processing the json data and also the form data uh, but then we forgot that you're going to be uploading file and on our form we did include this mal eng type multipart uh, slash form data so when we try to to, to send the data it is, it is coming with an image and the application is not able it's not does not know how to process that image data or file data and because we don't have the middleware to process the file data so for that we just need to install a new a new package that is called express uh, file upload i think that is the name so let me try to search for it first so it is called express file upload if i'm not wrong so let me see express file upload so if you open this a github repository you should see how to use it so for example the first time the first thing you have to do is to install it so let's just copy this and install it right so let's come here and install and then we'll scroll down and see look at the usage so this is how it is uh, here you can console log the files mm -hmm. so if you want to send the, into the temporary directory you can do that right so so basically you can you can read this if you like to to see how to do to, how to upload you can basically come here and read this document this the github the data the github repository documentation and even look at the example of how to maybe do a basic file upload so the basic file upload you have to the first thing you need to import the file upload and once you've done that uh, here all right so let's do this let's import that that file it has been installed so what you need to do is to import it here so what you need to do is to come up here and do a const express file upload is equals to require express file upload and then we are going to now use it here as a mid layer so you just do app dot app dot use and it basically is express express file upload like that so then once you do that i think we should be able to get the data uh, that comes through the we should be able to get the data the, the image data that is sent from the form so let's come back to post controller and we are here the first thing you're doing is to console log that data so let's come here and try it again so refresh and now we'll try to to just enter some ran random data and see if that data is going to be saved you can just pick some random image and click on submit so you've been redirected to the home page and now we need to see and there we go you still get that random data but they we don't have that image because uh i don't know if we we included that do not log the image basically to log the request body because the images the files are in request files right so the first thing we need to do is before before doing anything we need to get the files so we'll do const const image is equals to request dot files dot image 
or if you you want you can also use this syntax destructuring syntax object destructuring syntax like that so consumer is equals to require uh, request that files and then we we do what we want to do is now to upload to move that image right we need to actually import path here so just no const path is equals to require path and then the path we don't have to install it because it is in build module in the in express in that js i mean so we will do mm, just the move so we'll just do this there's this syntax you can use mv we are moving this file move image the temporal file path and the, we are moving the image from the temporary path where the image is stored temporarily to now the path that we like to store it which is a public dot post you remember we created this a public and then oh, we need to create a, a post we need to create posts I need to create post folder there and then uh, we do that after that we basically well, we are basically moving the email that is being uploaded to this uh, post folder of the public folder right so I think we need to change this syntax and there is a reason why you should change it uh, because you want, once the file is moved that is when you want to store our, our post to the database so we should do this we should just do an uh, image dot image dot move so we are basically moving this to the public uh, right and then we need to do after moving this we need to have um, so since this is a synchronous file uh, i mean since this is a synchronous function what you need to do is to do your await await image dot move so it is going to move that image to the directory that you specified and then after that here we need to also create the post so here we are going to do await await post.create and then we basically now want to use uh, all the other uh, we, we want just to, to create all uh, the, the, from the request body what you are doing is we are adding their image I don't know if you really understand this syntax. So the first thing we are moving the image. We are moving that image to the public directory, to the public slash post directory. Once we move that image, what we do, we do now is to create post. Okay, after creating post, but we need the name of the image. That is why now the name of the image is going to be slash post slash the name of the image. All right, image.name, as you can see here. And then once we are done, once that, that that is done we basically re redirect to the home page but in case we have any error we are it's going to throw that error down here so let's save that and try it and let's go back to the let's go back to the um, as you can see right now right now we don't have any image in the public post so if it works we should have one image here so let's try it so we'll go to slash post slash new and then uh, we just do first post the user is simon just right there first post user is simon and then this is the first content and then let's choose an image well it has come to that let's try to and see if it it moved that image or maybe had an error right and here you get you get the image you can see the image is here right that's great it means that the functionality worked well but then uh, we need to we need to go to our database that is why i told you to to install mongodb so that you can be able to check uh, the data from the the database so if I open my Mongo Compass, MongoDB Compass, I say directly that you should install, I suggested, it's not a must, but you should install it. Um, uh, 
you should install it it is a suggestion but it's not a must so we've got to node you can see how here node blog and if we open this if we open the posts you can see right here we have the first post it has been stored and this is the image so that is great everything is working well now since you we've we've now uh we will start the image there we need to do to customize the home page functionality here we need to get the posts and then send it here send the post to the to the home home page so that you can use the post so here we'll do const posts is equals to so let's make this async async function so that you can get the post so it's going to be await um post I think this post dot found, but let me just confirm. So it is post dot confirm. So it is post dot find so this is going to get all the posts uh, from the database and then we basically need to pass the posts here all right this need to, to pass the posts there and then now we, since you have passed the post to the request uh, to the to the render page to the page where we need to display those where we should display all those posts we are able to access them through our if we go to the views and then index we are able to now look through them and display each so what you need to do is we want to get the each post right this is the first post is the post view so what you need to do is to remove all these other post views i think up to here need to delete everything and now we need to look through so how do we look through so we have at <laughs> we don't use for each so we do at each at each post in posts and then need to end each so you need to end each here and each so at each post in post now we can display here so the url is going to be posts slash and uh, there is going to be post id so just do post.id you are going post.id you are going to pass the post id here but then you've not created this route this is the route for getting a single post or displaying a single post we'll do it later this is going to be post this is going to be post dot uh, title followed by post dot description post dot description and then uh, posted by this one should be post dot user so post dot username right it was username if i'm not wrong and this one was on created on will be post dot created at <laughs> created not this art but created at yeah that is it so we need to let me just change this to not blog not blog and come to not blog 
so let's just then just change that and we'll come back here and try to refresh and see if it works or maybe we'll get an error who knows ah there's an error <laughs> there's something they, they they are not being displayed there and we'll find out why it is not being displayed so the reason why the posts are not displaying is that we need to display here we just sent posts we need to send inside we need to make it an object like that we need to send it this way okay so we need to send it this way so make sure you send it inside these brackets so you save it this is how this is the syntax of sending the data to the in in edge in edge templating union this is the, the this is the the syntax so once we save that and now you see that our post is displaying that is good right that is great you can see now we have the first post uh, and now we need to implement the, the functionality of where somebody clicks here we need to open that post how do we do that so for us to do that we'll create a controller we will create a controller method inside post controller we'll just create another method and down here const show post and that is all so what what is it doing we need actually to export it so what it is doing is this uh, the post we when we click on you see that on the form if we go to the form uh, in the create post form you can see not the form actually on the home page index.edge you see that we are passing we are passing these posts we are passing there the the parameter we are passing the, the id of that post okay and when somebody clicks on that it is going to be sent in the request param parameters that is why when you come to the post controller we are doing const post is equals to await post dot find request dot params dot id so it is going to find the id of the id in the params that are sent in that request and since we have that what we do is we just find that post from the from the the post collection just find that specific uh, post using the id uh, since we've done this, you also need to go to app.js and import that, import a show post and then create, create a get route here, this, and then use the show post uh, controller method. Right, so, <laughs> so that is all, but um, it is going to now render let's see what it is rendering first go back to the post controller you can see rest.render post so it is rendering a file called post so we need to create that file so just create a new file inside the views and call it post so post.edge so inside the post.edge you basically need to import the the form you basically need to import the form and 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 there are this one, but then you need to remove the form and instead of the form we are going to just uh to, to, we are just going to to show the image so here we just import the form what you need to do since we have the post you basically want to to echo here the post dot content so it is going to show here the content of the post and here we can basically here we can show the title of the post which is post dot title and here we can show the description of the post post dot description mm -hmm. here we can now show the the image here <laughs> yeah, we can show the image the the post image so we basically echo post dot image 
that is all for short post but then you need to test it so let's refresh and try to click here and see what happens <laughs> so cannot find that i don't know if we did post we I, probably we created a post route instead of get route so let's check okay it is not post it is posts okay make sure that it is posts so let's go back and refresh and try it again and there you go you can see that now our post is being displayed quite well here now we need to move um, to another thing uh, now that the user is able to create posts you need to now update these uh, we need to update these to we need to update these okay how do we do that so we'll go to to the we'll go to the uh, to this file layout file and we'll change this to node blog and after doing that uh, we need to to go to the to the navigation menu here the home will change it to this and then about page uh, we can just change it to create post create post and then the the url will be <laughs> posts slash new and then this one should be it should be this one will render it we will, will render it um using it conditionally so here is going to be register and here we are going to have login so we'll create a new file called i will create a new path file dot register auth dot register will be a new route that we'll create later and here we'll do auth slash log in and let's save that and once we have saved that let's uh, come here and refresh so there's one more thing we need to change this one should lead to the home page and you can just change the title to to not blog and now here we go so when i click here it leads me to the home page and from the home page i'm able to create posts by clicking there it takes me to the to the to the create post form now here at this point anybody is able to create posts but then we need to restrict it in a way that only the logged in users are able the authenticated users are able to create posts so for us to do that we are going to install a new we are going to to to, to install express session all right so uh, we were talking we have been talking about the user authentication and i just realized that you've not done the user registration and login functionality and you cannot talk about user login unless you've uh, you've enabled the uh, you've enabled the user login the registration so uh, right now let's just go ahead and do the user uh, creating user and also the when you create the user um and the users will be able to log in so for that i think we need to go back to our project and for the user uh, for the user to be able to register we need the the, 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 the the you need to store the users so that when they are registered get their information from the database so the first thing you have to do is to create the user model so let's just go to the models here you see we created posts but now we need to create a new model where we are going to define our schema. So let's just create a new file and call the file user.js. 
And then right there we need to, to first um, import uh, mongoose. So we just do const mongoose is equals to require. So we basically require mongoose. And then uh, we define the mongoose schema. And then we define the user schema. So const user schema is equals to we instantiate the, the mongoose the, uh, schema. So we need the username, which is going to be a string, and we'll require it and it will be unique. Um, so another thing we need is uh, the thing we need email, and we also need the password. Um, we also need the password. We need created that, and basically that is the uh, the time the the user was created. And we are, as you can see, we are giving it the default of. Uh, date that none meaning that um, the the date the user uh, was created. Well, that is it for the user schema, and we export that schema. But wait a minute. For the for the password, we need to hash the password before uh, we will. Let's just remove this property trim. So for the password, since you are going to be saving the password to the database, we need a mechanism of 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 the of uh, a mechanism of encrypting that password before it is stored uh, to the database in the database. So what you need to do is to install a new package, and that package is called encrypt, uh, decrypt. So just do, uh, just open your terminal and do an npm install decrypt. Decrypt. Yeah. It is decrypt. I misspelled. It is decrypt. So once we've done that, we need to import it here. So just do const decrypt. Const decrypt is equals to uh, require decrypt. And then before we save, before we save the before the data is saved, we need to encrypt it. So, so we just do a user schema. User schema preserve. We need to encrypt it. Okay, we need to hash the password. Uh, before it is stored to the database. And basically that is it. So basically what we are doing here, uh, if this password is not modified, we want to, to, to encrypt that password and save it to the database. So you can see basically here we are rehashing that password 
and setting this the schema to the database to the, the schema the the field password to the hashed uh, to the hashed password basically that is uh, that is how we do it now every time we register the user the password will be hashed before that user is stored uh, to the database now that we've written that functionality we need to go to uh, we need to now go to the app.js and define the route so we need to define first uh, app.get so we need to do the auth routes so it's going to be auth auth register basically you can just do auth register um, and we are going to we are going to use we are going to write that the method to handle that in the user controller so that means that you need to create a new file in the controller as a new controller called user controller so just go ahead and create a file called user controller dot js in your controllers file there and that is how we just define const console form create user let's just call it create user and let's just make it a sync but i don't think we need to we need to basically yeah, what we need to do is to render i don't think it has to be a sync function so because here we basically render the just render the, the user create user form so you just have a render rest dot render uh, user create user we just call it create user the other one we call it create post but this one you can just call it create user then uh, once it is done let's just remove this And you also have to import here the schema, the user schema, the user model because you're going to use it. So just do const user is equal to require model slash user. So in other user schema, we are going, not going to use the, the schema in the, in the create user uh, because that here we are basically rendering the form. So once that is done, let's go to the views and create a new view that is called I create user dot edge so we are going to copy the form in the in the in the create post but we are going to modify that form the modification you are going to do is we are going to remove the content because we don't need it we're also going to remove the file we only need to remain with the two fields uh we are going to change here uh, the route the action is going to be auth slash save <laughs> save uh, then how do we call this uh, store user store user auth.register let's just give it auth.register and the method is going to be to be post and you don't need this multi-type we don't need that because you're not going to upload images so the first thing here we need to specify is email and this the type here is email the name email plus holder I don't think we need placeholder. And then we need the a, a username. We need, we need the username field. And we also need the password. If I'm not wrong, we also need the password. <laughs> we need the password field. Not if, if I'm not wrong, we need the password field. The password. So the type is password. 
and the name is password we don't need the the placeholder so we basically remove it on username we also don't need the placeholder let us remove that okay so the route is out the register but now this is the post route so what you need to do is to we can also change here and just let me register user register So let's save that, go to the app.js and import the that controller. So you're going to just do const. It's called, uh, that method is create user. And the function that we created on the, on the user controller. So we basically import that. And then after importing it, we want to use it here. So it is, um, create user another method we need on the controller is the storing of the user but then we'll do that after we are done with this so we need to go back to the to the template to the layout and create user register is auth that actually it is there it is working so we need just to save and go back and test it so let's try to click on the register and see and there you go we now have our our beautiful form here <laughs> our nice looking form here where we can enter the email the username the password and save the user but then uh, we need to now create or write the functionality for for storing the user to the database so let's go to the user controller and create another another method another function we'll call it store user and we'll make it a synchronous function because we'll be interacting with the database. Uh, so we don't need to do that. We just do so we basically do post and not post actually user, we call the user model user.create user.create and using the request body so what i mean is this when the data is sent through the the request you're going to get you can get all the data through request doing request.body it's going to give us all the data and then once that is done we just create the user we just basically save the user to the data the details to the database because at this point the password will already have been encrypted because you know very well you remember very well that we wrote the encryption functionality in our model so let's save that and then we need to include that function here store user i need to go back to app.js and import it so we need to import it here store user and we write another route and basically same but then the difference is that this is a post route and the function that is going to handle that on the controller is store user okay now it is time to test the functionality all right so we'll go here and enter a new and in, in test email i have many test emails a username simon password one two three four and submit and it has taken us to the home page without giving any error so what you need to do is first check the database and see if the user has been created so you just go to the just open mongo compass Mongo compass if you installed it we are, we, can able, we are able to check if the user was stored in the user's collection
so we have a weird score node blog remember that the database that you are using and good enough you can see how users table has been uh, users collection has been created here and you see that the user has been stored and look this is beautiful because the password has also been hashed oh that is beautiful now since we've done uh, now that we've done that we need to go and now create the user login right the the, the, the user login functionality so we'll just do um app dot dot get and we are going to call that route auth slash login auth slash login and for that we are going to use we are going to create another another function in the user controller uh, we can just do const uh, user login page you can just call it user login page Uh, actually this is going to do here we are going to render the, the user login page uh, we can just name it show user login page show login page so remember you can call it uh, you can you can give it the name of, uh, of your choice but then here I'll just give it show login page and basically it is going to render a page called login and once that is done I need to pass it here show login page uh, in the exports and once that is done i'll also go here to the app.js and import it first uh, here and use it here and uh, that is done but you need to create here we need to create the login form basically it is going to be same as uh, create but we are going to remove the username we are going to remove the username and just remain with email and password so close in the views create a new file called login dot js and not dot edge and then we copy the code from create user and paste it here and in this code what you want to do a few things you need to do is to remove the username and then we also need to change the route to slash login auth slash login auth slash login here and that is going to be the the route we are going to post the data so once that is done you just save it and when somebody clicks on login now you should lead us to that page and here we go we see we have the the email the password and then the submit button right there then now that you have our page the next thing is to write the functionality for logging in the user right so let's go to the user controller and and create another function uh const login now here is going to be a sync um going to be a sync so basically the first thing we need to do is to get is to get the details from the request body we need the, the email and the password right and once we have the email and the password we need to check if the user exists from the database
So I'm going to explain everything here. The first thing, what we are doing here is to get, we are finding, we first get the, the request data, that is the email and the password that has been sent uh, when somebody submits the login form. And after doing that, we find the user, we find the user from the database uh, whose email is equivalent to the email that has been sent there. And if we have that user, it means that uh, the user is there. So we basically compare the password. That is why we are using Bcrypt here. So Bcrypt did compare password and the user password. And if if result, if we get it there, if we get true, we are going to do this, going to return true if the password is match. If it is true, we, re we redirect to the, to the register. Else, we redirect back to the not if it is true redirect to the home page otherwise we redirect to the login page okay so basically that is the functionality for for logging in the, for registering the user So basically that is the functionality for logging in the user. So here we just need to change it to login user. And then we pass that function here. And this function you are going to import it. But before that, uh, we need to do something. You can see that here we are using Bcrypt. And since we are using Bcrypt here, we need to import it here. Otherwise we are going to, to, to get an error. So const Bcrypt. is equals to require bcrypt yep so that is it so after after that what we need to do is to go to to app.js and import that function so in the app.js we need to import it here it is login user and then we need to copy this route and change it to post and change the function here login user All right that is it let's test if it works so let's go back here and refresh and let's try to enter the email so let's try to enter the, just any other password that is not right do not uh, the password that is not correct and you can see that you've been redirected to the login. So the email, incorrect password, we are redirected to the login. But it looks like right this time around we have an error. All right, I don't know why we have an, that error, but then what you want to try now, let's try the right credential. We use these test emails and the password was one, two, three, four. So let's try. And there you go. You can see we are now, we have been redirected to the, to the homepage, just as we wrote in the, in the, in the functionality that in the user login functionality. Yeah, so if the user is found, redirect to the redirect to the home page if there is any issue what do we do we we redirect to the authentication page. but then let's do do one thing let's write this in the try catch statement so that in case there is any error it's going to be caught and logged in the logged in the console so just do try catch so here we try that but in case you have any error, we just want to console log that error. Let's format our code. All right, so that is all with the user registration and login. Now, the last 
thing that remains is the user authentication, right? Because you said that you want that we want the functionality to work in a way that the user cannot, uh, a, they, a, nobody can create the, a post unless they are logged in to the application. So we've done the registration, users are able to register. And we've done the login, we are able to authenticate that the users are in the database using the, uh, the email they used to register and the password. But now we don't have the user session. So in the, in this, in the following tutorial, what we want to do is to implement the, the user session so that you can get the user who is logged in and be able to start a user session and destroy the user session when that user is logged in. So this brings us to the point where we were talking about the user session. And if you remember very well, we talked about two, two, we talked about two packages that you need to install. The first one is called Express Session, and the second one is called Connect Mongo. So we are going to right away install those packages. So the first one is Express Session. And for you, I said, uh, as you are starting, that if you want to know how these packages are used, all the packages that you've been using in this tutorial, you basically search for those packages and you go to their GitHub repositories. If you go to their GitHub repositories, you can see that this is the express session, you can see the usage. This is the installation. Let's just copy that. And then the usage, if you read the documentation, you'll find out how it is used, right? But now we want to use this with the connect Mongo package so that we can be able to store the session in the MongoDB database. So right away, let's go and install uh, Express Session. So let me clear and then install Express Session there. And while it as it installs, let me go and search for the connect mongo connect mongo uh, session and the connect mongo package so connect mongo package requires that you have the express session installed so this is how to install it npm install connect mongo and basically we'll copy that come here and paste it to install that package and as it installs, let's look at the session, at how it is done. So the first thing, you import the session and you import the Mongo store as a connect Mongo. And once that is done, you basically do this. So let's copy this and come to our app, uh, to, to our app.js. The first thing we need is to import all those packages that you've just installed session and then express session. So, and then we need to set it here. So where we are just going to do app.use session. Secrets, we can just give it a secret, uh, just do it as a secret. And then there are actually various, uh, there are various uh, arguments you need to pass there. And for example, you can see this one. You, if you read the documentation, you'll find out more about them. But the most important is the secret and the store. This one are mandatory. You need to have them there. Uh, the secret and the store. So once that is done, remember that this URL I told you that it is not going to work. So you have to replace this. Uh, you have to replace this with 0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and then this one is the name of our database which is node blog okay so i think um i think that if we now create if we now log in the user uh the user is going the session is going to be created so let's try to, let's try to to log in and, and to, to log in a user. I will go back. We'll go back to the application and go to the login page and try to to create a new to log in a user. 
And remember this is the user that we created for testing. So it has led me to the to the home page, meaning that the credentials are correct. But let me now check the uh, let me check the the node blog. Oh, we don't have that in the uh, we don't have that. It is not the session has not been stored. And the reason is very simple. We wrote we wrote the functionality, but we need to go and modify the user login in the user controller. Uh, we need to modify this user login, right? So yeah, what we need to do is before we redirect, we need to put the user ID in the session. So we just need to do request dot user ID, request dot session dot user ID is equals to user dot ID. So we need to store that right you need to store that session the user id in the session okay uh, now let's try it again so let's try it again so we'll click on login so now that we are using we are storing the user id in the session Mm, now that we are okay we need to add <laughs> a minute first so if we have the user uh, basically what we are doing we are checking the password if the password is not correct we are redirecting to the authentic to the auth login page if the password is correct we are redirecting to the home page but we need to do something here if we don't have the user we also need to redirect to the login page or the home page so just write here else else you direct to auth login and then now i was saying that if, since we have the user session we are storing the 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 user id in the session what we need to do we are able to find out if the user is logged in now because we don't want that if the user is logged in if the the session has the user id we don't want to take the user back to the login page when they try to access the login page we need to redirect them to another page or to back uh, from the page they came back they came from so for that you'll write a middleware that is called auth auth.js a middleware file called auth.js and we'll just do module.exports module.export is equals to we need to, to do a, a synchronous here, a sync. So basically here, we are finding out if the request has session, okay? The request has session and the, the session has user ID, okay? As user ID, but then we need to first, if we have the, the user ID, we need to first find the user from the database. So we we'll just do const we need to import the user we need to import the user model here so const const user is equals to require model so the first thing if we have the request user id what we do we know that the we have the the id in the we have the the, the id in the session but then we don't trust that ID because we don't know if that is a is maybe another ID from somewhere else. We need to first check from the database if that user exists. So we do const user is equals to await find user by ID, which is going to be session dot user ID. Right, request session, then user user ID. And then if user, if the user, we know that that user is, uh, if user, if we have the user, what you need to do is to, re, uh, to, to call the next, to allow it to proceed to the next level. Otherwise, we don't want to allow it to continue, we just want to redirect to the, to the lo login page right so basically this is the 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 middleware this is the middleware for authenticating if the user is logging or not so let me let me explain again uh, when 
a user logs in you remember very well that we put the id in the session and since that id is in the session you can access it from anywhere in the application so we have created a middleware here called auth.js and inside this auth.js the first thing we, we do is to to find out if we have the id if the user has a session and the session has the answer uh, uh, has this value user id if the session has the id we we don't just say okay we could just return next but then it is good we verify if that user is in the database to just verify if it is our user or not so that is how we, we that is why we we get the user we try to find the user from the database if we find the user we return the next request or we return next meaning that we allow the user to continue to the next page whatever page they were trying to visit otherwise we redirect them back to the login page and if we don't have the session we also redirect back to the login page so that is it let's save it and we need now to use that middleware so we come back to the application to the app.js and then we need to import let's just format and then we need to import middleware so we just will do const const auth i will just call it const auth middleware is equals to middleware's auth and then we need now to protect we need to protect the login page with the auth middleware so we need to go to the auth login not the post the get one the get route yeah so basically when somebody tries to visit login it is going to pass through this method first it's going to pass through this auth middleware first to be checked if it passes it is going to show the login page meaning that if we don't have a, an id the user id the id that we saved in the session it is going to uh, go back go to the login page if we have it it is not going to allow it it is going to direct to the home page or to another page okay but then it, we, we, we specified it there so let's save that and try so let's refresh and try to click on the login page so it looks that the user is not logged in so let's try it again so we'll try with the email so it redirects us to the home page so for us to know if the middleware is working we need to click on the login page again it is taking us back to the login page it means that there is an issue uh the session is not storing the id or the id is being stored in the session we need to find out why for us to know if the error is in our code we need to try and log in the user we need to try in the auth the js and log in the user here so let's just try to log in the user console.log user so let's save that and try to visit the login page once again so let's click on the login button and since we visited we need to go to the terminal and see if we have the user we have the user you can see we have the user so that's good the problem is in our functionality you can see we have the user we are getting the user using the session id so we need to go and look at our logic if user return next Okay, so let's just call this const 
authenticate user and then here we'll just write uh, just write that then we'll import this and go back to the app.js and import that and use it here all right let's try it again and see if we'll still get an issue We seem to have an error const here is equal to a sync await. Oh, there is an issue here. Okay, so let's try it again. Let's just try to click on the login page. And it is taking us back to the login. There is an issue. I think the issue is in our logic. Let's look at it again. If user Oh, I'm very sorry. We are, I'm sorry. I'm the one who's on the wrong. So what we need to do, if we have a user, we don't need to return the next request because it, the next request would be, since the user, somebody clicked on the login page, the next request will always be login page. So we need to, if we have the user, we need to redirect back to the home page. So we we'll do rest.redirect. So we we'll redirect to the home page. If we don't have user, we return next. So we just call next. And then if we don't have user, okay, if user, I don't know these if statements are confusing me. Let me format it. I think there is an issue somewhere. There is an issue somewhere. We need to, I think we need to. If user, so let's try start with this. this one if i don't know if this if statement and so the first one if you have the user redirect this is logging redirect to the home page else we return the next page and then if we don't have the user we redirect to the login page i think that is okay that's that logic should work now so let's save that and come back and try it again so let's try to click on the login on the login page. 
and you can see it is redirecting us to the home page and the same thing if we don't have the user if we don't have the user we need to to, to for some, when somebody clicks on create post and that user is not logged in we want to redirect them to the login page okay So for that we need to create another middleware that you can call it redirect if authenticated. So go to the middleware folder and create another file. Call it redirect if authenticated.js. And that's the module that exports is equals to async so here let me just close it first here we just want to find out if the request has id so if the request has an id is id we, re we return if the user has a, the, if we have the id in the user session we return next otherwise we redirect to the login page right so uh, let me re let me repeat this again the redirective authenticated function or a middleware is going to check if we have session in the user if we have id in the user session if we have the id in the user session we return next or we return the next request meaning that you allow the request to go through otherwise you want that user to get logged in first before they can do whatever they are trying to do so once that is done we just save it and let's go to the app the js and import it so we go to the we go to the app let's go here and then consider redirect if authenticated so this is how we import it and then which which route do you want to protect you want to protect the create route the create post route so where is it it is this this route here you need to protect it using a redirect if authenticated if authenticated okay so if the, the if the user is authenticated we, re, we return we redirect to the to the next page otherwise uh, we we redirect to the login page Now the next thing is to find out a mechanism of how we can get the user data, the logged in user data in our in our the logged in user data in our in our in our, in our uh, templating engine files. Okay, so for that we just do uh, app app dot use. app.use what you need to do is define const user id is equal to request id and then a const user is equal to db dot get users find id whatever you just want to get what you want to get is <laughs> let's just import the import the model here use const user is equals to model that user so since, since you have that there we need to just get the uh, we need to get the the user using the model const user is equals to 
user.findById and the id is the user id yeah so let's make this a sync and then here we'll do await so then after that we, we define now global uh, we need to import edge.js so here we can just do const edge is equals to require edge.js then once we've done that we need to define global variable so do edge edge.global user is equals to user and then edge.global uh, session user id you can just do user id is equals to request the session that dot id that dot user id that is all so basically these are we this is how we we send the we send the 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 user and then the user id the session id to the edge file so that you can use them from we can access this information from the edge files all right we are doing well now we are almost concluding our application but then now why did we do that we did that we shared this global variable so that you can be able to to write some functionality to be able to hide and show some pages based on the user whether the user is logged in or not so for example here you can see that uh, we, can, we are still showing the register in the login page yet the user is logged in we don't want to do that so let's go back to the to that our layout file which is in views layouts app and we want to to show this two pages conditionally okay so let's cut that and just do at if at if user id at if user id we paste that and if so if if not actually if not at if if not since we have the user id being passed to the edge files what you want to find out if we, if we have the user id so if we you have the user we don't have the user if we, we 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 don't have the user id we can display them but if we have so we need to just do at else and if If we don't have the user ID, if the user is not logged in, we show the register and login page. If the user is logged in, uh, what you want to show is basically the, the logout button here. We need to show first the name of the user and the logout button. So last, let's do it right here. The name will be, the name will be, user dot remember we also passed the user so it's going to be user dot username right and then this button just call it logout it is going to lead to the auth logout this is the route we are going to create and then i think you can just add here text you can just add text danger and let's save that and go back and refresh and see what happens we have an issue
You need to go to the console and see. Cons require Mongo. There is an issue there. So let's go to the app.js. App.js, you have an error. Oh, the reason is here. So let's save it and refresh. Don't know if the server is running. So let's just clear everything and restart it. So as it restarts, we want to write the last functionality on the user controller, which is the user logout. So and come here and just write a const logout user. And basically, we just destroy the session. Basically, we destroy the, the user session. OK, request the session does this destroy. And that is all. And we pass here logout user and after that doing that you go back here and import it so we need to import it here logout user and finally we need to create a we need to get, create a get method here and going to be out slash logout and we use that function logout user so that is it so let's try and i don't know why it's, but then i don't know why it is not working Oh guys, the issue is that after doing this, we did not, uh, we did not, <laughs> we did not call next. So let me explain this function first. This is every route, all the routes, they have to come through. When the request comes, it has to pass through this. So when it passes here, the first thing is that you are adding inside the request user and you are adding there the the user ID and then allowing to proceed to the next route. So for example, we want to visit the the home page. It will pass here. Then it comes here, we pass there the, the we pass uh, we pass there, we set the global user and the global user ID and allow it to go to the next page. So we have to call next to allow it to proceed to the next page. Uh, and you can see that solves the issue. And right here we have the logout button. And if we click the logout button, so you see we are able to create we are able to create a post. But then let's try to click on the logout button to destroy that session. You see now that the session is destroyed. Now we are able to we are able to we are, you now see the, the the register and you also see the login page. Let's try to click on create post. So you see it is giving an error. And I think that error comes from this, right? We need to check first if we have the, the user. So we need to do it if, if user ID. So we only want, need to, to run this code if we, need, we have the user ID, okay? Only if you have the user ID, that is when you need to, to get the user from the, the database and then set global variables of user and user ID. But then if we don't have the, the user, we'll just return the next request because now the user is not 
uh, the, the, the user is not logged in. So let's refresh and try again. Many redirects. Let's see where is the issue. So the error says that this local loss redirected too many times. I think the problem could be could be this redirect if authenticated. Let's try to remove this and see. Let's just remove that and save it. And go back and try to refresh. Let us refresh and try to click on that. And you can see it is allowing us to go, th to go through. So the problem, I think it is on the auth login. Okay. The problem is in the is in the on the login page so let's have that refresh and i think the problem is on the login page so let's go back to the login page and see the login functionality and see what uh, i think it is in the auth.js so if So I think this, I also suspect that there must be something here. So if you call that user, there must be an issue here. So let's try to remove this code. If auth.user if the user if user will return here um, and then if we don't have the user we just allow that request to go through so actually we need here to to change here to next all right basically that is what we need to do uh, so basically let me explain a little bit so if we have the user we know that the user is logged in so we return the next we, 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 if if we have the user session we know that we have we have an ID. We have an ID in that session. If we have the ID in the user, if we have user ID in the session, what you want to do is to check if that user exists in the database. If the user exists, we return and we redirect because the user is already logged in. But if we don't have, we return the next request. Okay, we return the next request. So we just allow the user to access the login page in other terms. So, so that is the, that is all. Now we need to go to the app. Uh, I, I don't think we need to change anything there. So let's just save it and doubt the application should work well. Uh, so we are able to, let's try to click on post. And you see it is now redirecting us to the login. And the reason is that the user is not logged in, the user is not authenticated. So if we try to click on home, we can access home. If we, we click on register, you see we, we get the page. If we click on the login, we get the page. But then if we click on create post, it will direct trust to the, the uh, to the login page because that user is not logged in. So let's create an, another user. And that user we just use test at uh, test at test.com. Then user name is test user. Then the password is one, two, three, four. <laughs> Basically that. So and click on submit. And here we go. Um, we have created the user. We now need to go and log in. Still we cannot. We cannot create the user. We need to log in first. So we use a test. I think it was test at test the demo, and the password was one, two, three, four, and. And there we go. We are now logged in. You can see we have the users logged in and we have the logout button. And now when we click on create post, you can see now we are able to create uh, our post. All right, that's great. Uh, but now the thing is here, since we have the user here, instead of just allowing the, the, the user to be entered manually, we can get the user from the user session right 
So let's go to the create user, not to create user, create post. And then here we have the user. So the username. So what we need to do is to just um, <coughs> the username here. Yeah. Need to remove place. So we don't need placeholders in this. And then they are making the forms look ugly. So I think you can just remove the placeholders. Now on the user on the username, this should be username actually. Name should be username. And the username we need to add the value, and then that value is going to be user dot username, user dot username, and then we want to make it read only. So because we don't want the user to change it. So we just need to change it to read only. And that is all. Now after saving it, if we come back and refresh, we should now get the username. You can see the username is the test user. All right. So let's try to, to create a post. Let's copy this post. And go back to our blog. And paste our post. And get an image. Let's get any image. And submit. I don't know if we have an error. Yep, we have an error. So I think the reason is that this post is too long. I think this is too long. So I think let's try to reduce it. Because remember, did we, this content was post. So let's remove that and try to submit. think it is still long but then you can change that actually you can change that in the user schema let's try to remove up to that level and try to submit if it doesn't go through i think we'll know that uh, the issue is with our form i think so let's check that error Username is required. Okay, that is the problem. Username is oh, you can see here <laughs> the problem is here. Username we we misspelled there, so we need to undo all the we need to have the full post there, and then we'll try to submit it. So let's try to submit it and see. But I think we need to refresh. We need to refresh first. And then Lorem Ipsum text. And there you go. You can see that the Lorem Ipsum text uh, post has been created. And now if we click here, you can see that this is our post. That is beautiful, right? Now you can add more functionality to this blog in quotes. It is just a very simple blog with a simple functionality. I just wanted to remind myself Node.js because I've not been writing Node.js for some time now. Uh, you could write the functionality for maybe uh, validating. You can see our validation there. It, it, you can just search on how you can validate when before the user creates a post how you can validate uh, these fields 
and also when the user is registering you can you can check if you can the, the way you can validate when the user is registering to the to the blog so thank you so much if you enjoyed this tutorial make sure that you subscribe to this channel for the um, for more tutorials